I have a context free grammar with me. Is it possible for me to simplify that context free grammar? Yes, it is possible. We have two algorithms to be used to simplify this context free grammar. First one is to find and remove unproductive variables by using remove unproductive variables. By using this algorithm remove unproductive if there are any unproductive variables they are removed from the context free grammar that is the first algorithm. Second algorithm is to find and remove unproductive variables by using remove unreachable variables and this is the algorithm used. So, we will see both the algorithms one by one in sequence. First one is unproductive non-terminals and the algorithm used is remove unproductive. You have a grammar. So, first what we must do? Mark every non-terminal symbols as unproductive. So, initially we will set all the non-terminal symbols present in that grammar as unproductive. Then all the terminal symbols as productive. Once we have marked then until one entire pass has been made without any new symbol being marked. What to do? For each rule extends to alpha in a in the rule set check. If every symbol in alpha is being marked as productive, if all the symbols present in this alpha are being marked as productive and if x has not been marked as productive, then mark x as productive. So, in this way you have to check for all the rules. Once you check for all the rules, you are left with some symbols which are unproductive. So, in the next step go for removing all those unproductive symbols and even in the rules go for removing the unproductive rules and return the grammar. So, whatever grammar you have returned it is free from unproductive non terminals. We will take one simple example for this. I will take a grammar consisting of a set of rules S tends to A B or A C, A tends to A A B or epsilon, B tends to B A, C tends to B C A and D tends to A B. So, what the algorithm states? What is the first? You have the grammar, then mark all the non-terminal symbols as productive. So, unproductive. Which all non-terminal symbols you have? Yes, A, B, C and D. All these you have marked as unproductive symbols. Then in the second, third rule what you state? Mark every terminal symbol as productive. So, which all terminal symbols you have here? A summation is A, B. So, A and B are productive. So, initially we have A and B productive. Yes, A, B, C, D as unproductive. Now, what to do? Until one entire pass. Take one by one rule. So, first I will take A, B. So, A derives A, A, B. Okay. And here A, A tends to and this A tends to epsilon. So, have A, B. And since both A and B are productive, then A is also productive. Next. Once A is productive, you can see here B derives B, B tends to B A. B is productive, A is productive. So, B is also productive. Once B is productive, you can see here S tends to A B and D tends to A B. So, S tends to A B and D tends to A B. So, A and B both are productive. So, S and D are also productive. So, S and D are also S and D are also productive. Then you can see here S tends to A B. So, A B S are productive. S tends to A C is C productive? No. 
then A over B over C over. So, left over with D is productive C, C tends to B C A and C is not productive. So, only non terminal symbol left is C. So, C is unproductive rule. So, at that time unproductive non terminal. So, at that time what to do? So, wherever you have C must be eliminated and its rule also must be eliminated. Then the final grammar obtained is S tends to A B, A tends to A A B or epsilon, B tends to B A and D tends to A D. So, this is the output of this algorithm. So, we can quickly see here you have the grammar whatever we discussed just now A and B as terminals A is productive, B is productive, S and D are productive, but C is not productive. So, hence what we did? We eliminated C and the grammar obtained is S tends to A B, A tends to A A B or epsilon, B tends to A and D tends to A B. Next, given this grammar after eliminating non terminals, we have unreachable non terminal. What do you mean by unreachable non terminal? A ter non terminal which is not reachable from the start state, such type of variables or non terminals are called as unreachable non terminals. So, how to eliminate this unreachable non terminals? Mark S as reachable. So, initially mark S as reachable, then mark every other non terminal symbols as unreachable all other non terminals as unreachable and only start state as reachable. Then until one entire pass has been made without any new symbols being marked, then what to do? Check for each rule x tends to alpha a beta. If x has been if x has been marked as reachable and a is not been marked as reachable, then mark a as reachable. And once we are done with all the rules, remove from the grammar every unreachable symbol and remove from grammar every rule with an unreachable symbol on the LHS and return the grammar. So, we will take the same grammar here. We have how many variables? S, A, B and D. So, yes, as you know all these are initially declared as unreachable and S is declared as reachable because it is a start symbol. Next, if S is reachable, LHS is reachable, then its RH is also reachable. So, it means what? A is also reachable and B is also reachable. Then A is, reach, a is reachable, then A is also reachable, we have included B is reachable, then A is also reachable, we have included. D, is it reachable? No. Hence, unreachable non-terminal is D, which is to be eliminated. On eliminating all the non-terminals D at both the RHS and LHS, the final grammar obtained is S tends to A B, A tends to A A B or epsilon, B tends to B A. So, this grammar is free from unproductive variables and unreachable variables. So, these are the two algorithms used to simplify the grammar and this was wherein D is unreachable. So, on reachable stuff unreachable from the start state hence the grammar obtained is S tends to A B, A tends to A A B or epsilon or B tends to B A. Next, once we have written the context free grammar, then we have simplified the grammar by using two algorithms unproductive and reachable. Next is proving the correctness of the grammar. So, how do you prove the correctness of the grammar? So, what do you mean by correctness of the grammar? Given some language L and a grammar G, we can prove that the grammar is correct. That is, it generates exactly the string in L. So, to prove this, we need to prove two things. One is prove that the grammar generate all strings in L by deriving the strings and another is prove that the grammar generates all the strings in 
L. So, these are the two methods to prove that the grammar is correct.